Today we have Monster Games, very nice console with built-in games, really ready for you to play. Let's check out what it is. Welcome to a Wicked Gamer and Collector review. I received the console uh, in this uh, working good condition uh, from my good friend Jeroen. Thank you for this. And he gave me one controller with the system. It came with a yeah, clone Super NES controller with turbo buttons. It feels really cheap. No shoulder buttons, some little bumps for extra grip. Let's take a look at the power supply. Yes, nothing special, just a universal power supply. The master game system. So yeah, the system is working. It has two ports at the front. Yeah, a cheap ass switch, a jack button like the Super NES, and a reset. It got only mono sound and normal composite output. Yeah, it still got the original sticker beneath it. That is very cool. And its serial number. So, shall we plug it in and see what the system does? So, let's plug in the controller. You can feel it's a cheaper system. Let's power it on and let's see what happens. And it is like magic. Let's take a close look at the screen and I'll show you what kind of games are on the system. So, it's time for a little story about this console. In the meantime, I am going to play some games. Yeah, what I really want to mention about this console is that uh, it's got a little story behind it. And that is what I want to uh, let you know and tell about. This is a clone system in the Nintendo 8-bit, NES or Famicom. The console which is not licensed by Nintendo in any way by the way. Anyway, by the way. The main reason why these clues exist is in the fact that there in the no official licensed version of the NES and Famicom was released in the former USSR. Or how do you pronounce it? Russia. So in Nintendo never released the NES Famicom in Russia. I'm going to call it Russia. And so never licensed over there. Because at the time they didn't see the market over there. Since there was no license on a company called Stiebler, cloned the chipset that was in the NES Famicom and released the Danny console. At first it started out as a Famicom clone, the Japanese NES. So timing had to be close to the NTCS version, but they needed to keep up the mind that the color is a subcarrier. Frequencies about 24% higher than the PAL than the NTCS televisions, so that, may mean, that meant they had to tweak the timing so it would work like it should on the face on Russia. So yeah, that ended up in a clone chipset with timings that were right in between the of, yeah, official Paul and NTCS chipset from Nintendo. The good thing is about this was that the fact that the NTCS games that glitched on the licensed Paul NES uh, do not work perfectly on the clones. The downside is that the timing is critical. Paul games try to trend to glitch and crash or not run at all on clones. The clone chipset was created with an NCS Famicom timing in mind, so the critical NTCS games do run like it should be. And another cool fact on this clone system is, like on the Japanese Famicom, there are no region lockout chips, so in any from of any region should boot, with the exception of the timing critical games, of course, that I mentioned earlier. The production of the sales of the Denny consoles were discontinued in 1996 and with an estimated of 1.5 million around uh, up going to 2 million units sold. So, <laughs> that's a lot. Right after a steeper company stopped producing the Dandy, the market, yeah, mostly Taiwanese, Brazilian and Eastern Europe market, were flooded with its clones. Other clones chips had started appearing and the full NES clones were cloned on a single chip. So they called it the NOAC. NES on a chip was born. Some clones were actually pretty good and others were <laughs> really rubbish. But uh, it was a shame when my buddy Jeroen uh, received the console uh, before he fixed it. Uh, they used the wrong power brick and I think normally never nothing happens if you put uh, more voltage on the, the system itself. But this one, yeah, maybe because it's a clone system. Yeah, they uh, bur totally burn out the voltage regulator and the capacitors. So uh, my good friend Jeroen, he, uh, yeah, he fixed it. He replaced them all. And uh, yeah, and as you can see, the system is running again. Yeah, so after uh, replacing the parts, he powered them on. And yeah, the console was working again. The power LED was on, you had the picture on the screen. But the thing was, it was too bright. 
and he looked at the video buffer started measuring around with his oscilloscope and that was pretty much he learned me the video buffer wasn't quite 100 correct he was still doing some math putting some resistors in series with also adding and duplicating capacitors to both the ev audio and the video output so the video buffer isn't ruined when he's magical leaking or static electri electricity goes through each one of them so yeah that was the last thing he uh, fixed and uh, that is the reason why this machine is working perfectly and has a really great screen so if you were searching for this machine and it is working um, like i've you know mentioned before uh, it still can have a lot of problems because yeah you run he fixed it all so it's time to check what happens if we enter an original pal game plug it in and be gentle because ooh, you can feel it's a really cheap ass system. Yep, power it on and let's see what happens. Yeah, blast the master. And as you can see, it works perfectly like on an original Nintendo Entertainment System. How cool is this? Oh, yeah, very great job. Okay, so let's try something else. I'm going to pop them out and we're going to grab. 151 multi card. Let's see if the multi cards are working on the system. Yep. Be gentle again and power it on. Ooh, yeah, yeah, it's fitting. Yeah, it's fitting correctly. And yeah, and it's working. So as you can see, my fellow gamers and YouTubers, even a multi card works on the system, and that is really awesome. Now let's see how it is. Oh yeah. And if you want to know what kind of game is it, I'll even link in my description so I can show you what kind of multi-card it is. Oh yeah. Everything sounds perfectly. So even this works very great on the Famicom fake console. And oh yeah, we're going to choose my favorite soundtrack, The Crash. Oh yeah everything works just perfect man i am well satisfied with this console it's got an yeah what i told you before it's got a really nice screen so overall it's a really nice console uh it was uh, a nice project from jeroen and very nice of him because i will let a little secret loose um, he gave the system to me and yes, I'm going to give it away also in my Facebook group to a, a fellow gamer who will enjoy it many days, many hours, and yeah, just have it in the collection. I am a, a Nintendo fan. I really love consoles. I really, really love hardware, but yeah, this system is not for me. I really love to give it away. So yeah, I hope you really enjoyed the video and, um, and the information I provided. And I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank you, Jeroen, for uh, sending me this and uh, give me the opportunity to uh, make a review like this. And uh, yeah, thank you, and I'll see you again in the next video. I want to thank you, I want to thank you for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh, and you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. <laughs>